Okay, hello everyone in Year 8. This is Mrs. Davis and I'll be describing um, rocks today. I'll be teaching you some tricks and tips that geologists use when they're describing rocks. Okay, so how can we describe rocks? Well, there's seven different characteristics that we can use to describe rocks. They are luster, colour, streak, hardness, cleavage, crystal shape and crystal size. Okay, so luster is the shininess of the surface of the rock. So you can see that the rock over here is quite shiny. It looks very metallic and um, we would call this um, a, probably a brilliant metallic rock. So there's two, you can use two words at the same time. Um, this rock here doesn't have um, a very shiny surface at all. So its luster is very low and dull. So we'd say that it was dull and earthy. It's not shiny and it looks more like a clump of dirt. Um, rocks can also be pearly, so they can be a bit shiny, um, a bit like a fingernail. Okay. The second characteristic that we like to use, and this is the one that makes a lot of rocks very valuable, is colour. So is the main, what is the main colour of that mineral? So you can see in here that we have uh, purple rocks, we have green rocks, we have red rocks and blue rocks. Uh, these can be shiny when they're polished up um, and some even have a luster like the tiger eye that we can see here. Um, it actually is pearlescent and as you, you move it, um, the light reflects through the different layers and shines off in different angles. It could be sparkly like this rock over here um, and have lots of different colours um, as stripes or layers in it. Um, or they, they could be dull colours like in this picture here, uh, like the, the earthy red and the brilliant blue over here or even just a white or a brown. Okay, so it's not the best quality to identify a rock with because things like sapphires could be red or blue. Um, so even the one type of rock could have different types of colours that they come in. Okay, the next type of quality that we often use is a streak. And a streak is a coloured line that's left on the paper. So basically we grab a rock and we rub it on a piece of paper and if um, it leaves a mark behind, we say it has a streak. Um, streaks can be a different colour to the colour of the rock um, and often this streak is used in pigments like ochres, um, like the sort of colours that we use in cave paintings. Um, or even in primary school you might have grabbed some rocks out of the garden and started drawing on the concrete and that, that's the rock leaving a streak behind. Hardness is another characteristic we use and it's really just describing how easily that rock can be scratched and how um, easily it can scratch other rocks. So we use a scale called the Mo scale and that's named after a scientist whose surname was Mo. Um, and basically he came up with a, a ranking between the hardest rocks like diamond um, and the softest rocks like talc. And yep, you're probably thinking, talc, is that like baby powder? Same stuff. It actually comes in a rock and it crumbles very easily, which is why we find it as powder so quickly and easily. Um, and you can see in here that there's numbers 1 to 10, um, and they rank the rocks in different hardness. So, so just some of the different objects we would use as a tester is if we could scratch it with our fingernail, it would be um, our fingernail's hardness is 2.5. So if it's scratched by that, fingernail, that rock's hardness is less than 2.5. Okay? The same as a steel knife has a hardness of 6.5. So if, if the steel knife can um, scratch that rock, then its hardness is less than 6.5. If that steel knife doesn't scratch the rock, then its hardness is above 6.5. So by using different tools and knowing their hardness, we can actually work out the hardness of the rocks that we're identifying. Cleavage. Now cleavage really just means breaking something into two pieces or into more than two pieces um, based on smooth lines. Um, I know a lot of people in their prior knowledge test said, oh cleavage, that's got to do with breasts. No, but breasts are also separated across two lines and that's why we're using um, that term cleavage. Now. Um, really just describes the number of smooth planes that the rock can break along. So you might have had a rock before and smashed it and it's broken into two perfectly even parts and there's a smooth line in between. You might notice that when you hit rocks in different patterns you can get them to break along different lines of cleavage. Um, so really it's cleavage just means to split something 
always think about a meat cleaver. A meat cleaver cleaves things. Um, it cuts meat into two pieces. Okay. Jewelers particularly like cleavage planes because it's really easy to shape diamonds if you know exactly where to hit them. And if you hit them in the wrong spot and the rock crumbles, then you've wasted a lot of money as a jeweler. Crystal size. Now, some crystals are really big like these ones here. These are big crystals. Um, but sometimes crystals are really small, like in a piece of granite or a piece of marble. And basically, crystals are formed in igneous rocks. So they're, they're formed in rocks that come from volcanoes. Um, when that rock is hot and molten and it starts to cool, um, if it cools really fast, you get very small crystals. And if you uh, if the rock cools really slowly, you get really large crystals. So you can imagine that these two sets of crystals we're seeing here um, are being formed uh, really slowly to form those really, really big crystals. Uh, one other way that you can form crystals is with water. And so these crystals get dissolved into it, into that water, and as it drips down, it forms quite a large crystal. And we call those stalactites if they're coming down from the ceiling of a cave or stalagmites if they're growing up from the ground. Um, but generally, although they're light crystals, they're not, not strictly crystals. Okay. Crystal shape can also give us a really good idea of which, um, which rock we're talking about. And when we go to the museum, you'll see lots and lots of different shapes and sizes of rocks. Um, and you can see here there's a whole heap of different shapes and sizes. And basically these are formed um, by their natural lines of cleavage and these are formed in nature. They're not actually formed by the jeweler. So although a diamond might be cut in, in one of these shapes, um, these shapes are talking about its natural state. And you're not expected to know all the names of the shapes, just know that they come in lots of different types and it's quite useful for identifying the type of rock it is. Okay. that's our last slide I hope you've enjoyed this little tiny presentation it's only a short one um, make sure that you can explain these to um, someone else and it's time to start preparing your textbook page thanks